Well, hello everyone, welcome down to the channel. And today we're gonna to be facing off a pure blade versus a forged cavity. So I recently went out to the course and tried the D7Ines. They're from Wilson. They were relatively cheap, relative being the word, forged cavity. And the performance on the course was absolutely brilliant. But a couple of things came from that video. First of all, people wanted more information on the irons and how they actually compare to a blade. And I get this question so often, should I use a blade? Should I use a cavity back? Should I use a game improvement iron? And that's what we're gonna be looking at today. So first up, the two irons. So we've got the P7TW here, very shiny shiny, slightly chipped now. Actually, the only irons in the world where I think head covers may be acceptable. I'm only joking. If you use head covers on your irons, honestly, it's absolutely fine. And then we've got these, the D7 Forge. Now, the differences between these irons, I mean, the first place to start, if you just have a look at the sole width. Now, I've got the six iron and the seven iron here in the different irons for a reason, which I'll allude to in a moment. But as you may be able to figure out, those D7 irons, they're going to be more forgiving. Now, you've probably heard that term used before, but what does it actually mean? So you'll notice on this D7, but we're talking about, you know, cavity back irons in general here. Because they've got a bigger area to play with, the club head is bigger. They can move the weight around in this club head a lot easier than they can with a forged milled bit of metal. And when engineers do that, if they're redistributing the weight to the perimeter of the club, when you hit this off center, so if you hit it out of the toe, if you hit it out of the heel, there's more resistance to twisting. So it's got a higher MOI, moment of inertia. Therefore, that ball stays on the club face for a little bit longer. And it's not as easy to deflect off and be a weak shot either to the right or the left. Now with a forged blade or a blade like this, any shot, say off the toe, off the bottom, off the heel, it's gonna twist the club face a lot. The energy transfer is gonna be coming down or won't go as far and it won't be as forgiving. Now you might look at that and think, well, why does anybody use a blade? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit 10 shots with each club, show you the data and just explain why better players and people who can strike the ball a little bit more consistently might be favoring a blade and why you might also actually consider it and why some of the better players players watching this might actually be worth ditching all stereotypes and switching to a fat, powerful cavity. Now, I'm not gonna talk you through every shot, but both shafts are stiff, not X-stiff. And I'm gonna be hitting a seven iron in each club. Now, the reason that I was showing you the difference between the six and the seven iron just before, lofts. So the lofts on the D7s are so much stronger than the blades. This is where if you're making a decision about a club, you just need to be aware that a seven iron in a Wilson isn't gonna be the same as a seven iron in a TaylorMade or a Shrix or a Callaway. Lofts are variable, so don't just trust the number on the top of the club. Somebody got some distance. Get a little bit more distance out of these irons. It's a couple of swing changes. Now, I picked the Tiger irons up in California, and the one thing which struck me on the course straight away when I started to use them is the distance control with these irons is absolutely superb. They don't feel overly soft, but they feel very, very solid. Balls I'm using here are Pro V1. I'm experimenting around with a few balls at the moment. Oh, take me to strike town. No! <laughs> oh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is a shank. Hey, listen, it doesn't matter what club you're using. When you hit it out of that part, nothing good's gonna happen. I'm sure you'll let me off getting rid of that one. I don't wanna mess up the averages. Isn't golf just a great game? It humbles you. Just when you think you've got it, just when you think you've got it all figured out. He's back. He's back. So straight away, when you put the D7 behind the ball, yes, it's a seven iron. Yes, I know it's got less loft, but actually it looks, it still looks really good. Wilson have done a really good job of hiding the thickness underneath that top line. Decent strike straight away. Wow, look at the difference in the carry. I have to say, I think Wilson have done an absolutely superb job with this iron because it feels incredibly powerful when it takes off. It absolutely explodes off the club face, but it feels amazing. I'm not gonna say it feels quite as good as the Tiger iron, but I, it ain't far away. But 
Please, again, tracing light. I'll show you some of the data from these shots and there's a key couple of points here that you need to pay attention to to understand the difference between the bladed club and that power cavity. I've taken out the shortest carry and the longest carry from each of the clubs, so we've got a selection of eight shots to choose from. I thought that'd be fair. So first of all, see the carries here with the Tiger Iron. So basically the least at 163, the most at 173. So a 10 yard difference. And the ones up at 170, those were the ones that I really caught very well. So even though the front to back dispersion wasn't as tight as I would ideally want it to be, because obviously I'd want them all landed in the same spot. So the backspin, my average backspin there was 6,370 revs per minute. Ball speed average at 190 miles an hour 0.9 now jump onto the wilson irons and start with the ball speed that suddenly jumped up to 126 so quite a remarkable increase but look at the spin rates as well 5500 carry distance up at 183 average so yes the lofts are stronger but we're looking at basically a club and a half. Peak heights are the same, launch angle slightly higher with the Tiger Iron. And this is where the decision becomes a little bit tricky because what are you actually after? Are you after distance with your irons or are you after control? Because irons like the D7, they are gonna be carrying further because they've got less loft, the weight has been distributed, so they launch high and they spin less. This is why bladed clubs are so much more the preference of the better player because the strike they're not really that worried about they back themselves but if they want to shape the ball so a little bit from left to right a little bit from right to left high low whatever it might be if they're using a club that they can better control the total spin numbers then that's going to be the one that they should choose so get down into those comments guys what is most important for you but it's time to put these through a test and we're going to do an fsx skills challenge it also gives me a chance to test out the wilson wedge again the forge wedge i kind of panned it in my first review and people got salty about it there's a a lot of people out there with Wilson wedges who rate them very highly. So I'm gonna have another go with them in here. Now, first shot, so I'm gonna be hitting it with this 58 degree Staff Forge model. On the course, I just felt they were firm. I didn't really get a lot of spin off them, but I'm willing to give it another go. So just that little chip to begin. Oh, go on, go in then. They're going in the bag. These Wilson wedges, actually probably the best wedges I've ever tried. Spin, spin. Ah, good strike actually. It's a 58 degree, should have put a little bit more loft on it. <laughs> well, the lack of spin actually helped on that one. <laughs> that was good. Oh, Wilson wedges. Oh, jeez, sit down. Sit. Bloody gigantic. <laughs> right, okay, so that same swing. Yeah, okay, it was just a brain fart. Sorry, Wilson. Sit. Into 120. So, so first little club dilemma here, because 120, see the really hard one of these gap wedges or a control pitching wedge. And I kind of think for the purpose of this test, I should try and control a pitching wedge. Now for a pitching wedge, this is normally a three quarter swing, but I'm effectively hitting a nine iron here. So this is going to be half a swing. Oh, I got the distance pretty good. Oh, that was unlucky. So 150, <sighs> so this is a nine iron, and I gotta be honest, at 150, I don't think it's a big one. Oh, the hubris got the better of me. Go on, go, 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 go. Ah, I didn't strike it amazing, but I thought I would've struck it good enough to get there. Damn, sorry about that. See, that's the thing, it's got a little bit more of the swinging from down here. Yeah, so that's one of the issues with the nine for me is 165 yards wedge. Is it going to go 150? Just trying to get that level of control. 180. Do I honestly think 180? I reckon I could maybe get an eight iron there. Seven iron is going to be way too much. I think I've pushed it. Oh, damn. Definitely had the distance. Oh. Yeah, if I had a cut or oh, 200 yards, it's going to be a seven. <laughs> Slink right at such. I 
mean, look at that. Look at this even stopped quite quick. 215. Just a nice, smooth find. Well, I've tried to cut it in a touch more. Oh, look at that. I'll sit down. Absolute boy. 230. I'm going to go five iron again. <laughs> I just pushed it slightly, opened the face, go on. I tell you what, if, if I'd have actually, if I'd have got the club face square on that, that would have definitely got the distance. Don't have any Wilson woods to use actually, so I'm just gonna use my three wood. And to be honest with this three wood at the moment, you might as well just mark me down for five. So it might sound a bit cocky, but, oh no, it's, ah, oh, it was cocky. <laughs> Oh, he's very cocky. Humbled. Humbled. So hopefully that's give you a little bit of a better understanding of what you should be looking for between a blade and a cavity back. If you do want that more control, but you are good at striking the golf ball, then definitely the Tiger Iron or something similar. Tiger Iron. A bladed club is going to be the way to go because it does offer you that control but you do have to understand that your striking has to be on but if you do want that power iron which is just easier to hit but you're not that bothered about shaping it then go for a club like the d7 i mean obviously i'm using these as examples but there's all the manufacturers bring out blades and bring out decent power cavities now all of a very similar ilk so low lofted high launching low spinning and they do such a great job so the other option is the split set. So get a bladed iron in the shorter irons and get a cavity in the longer irons. But I do have to be honest, I think the difference between the irons is growing. So let's say I'd pitch away the seven iron in those Tiger irons and six iron to three iron in the Wilson irons. The gap between that seven and the six is gonna be massive. But guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up, get down into those comments below, and make sure if you are a returning watcher or you haven't done so far, please subscribe to the channel. Really helps me out, really helps me grow, really helps me get my hands on my new set of uh, D7 <laughs> Forged irons. Alrighty, see you next time.